Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. I'm super excited to build this entire project from scratch, from ground up for you as part of Angular 19 CRUD project. We are using all the features that Angular 19 has to offer. At the same time, we are going to learn about the breaking changes from the previous versions. This live project will help both the beginners as well as expert developers from previous versions. So without wasting time, let's kick start. As always, thank you so much for always supporting me and my channel. I have recently launched the full stack interview preparation kit. Make sure that you get it. It's a must have for everyone. You can get it at arctutorials.gumroad.com. Following are the features that we will be implementing as part of this particular project. So everything importantly signals differ for performance loading, CRUD functionality, all the new features and breaking features, angular material grid with pagination, next breakpoint, much more. All of this will be covered. I have already given the demo as part of the first um, episode on this particular series. So make sure that you go through that. We also we already did the installation and setup. So make sure that you go through that in order to proceed further in this tutorial. Today we are going to implement signals and services. Very, very critical, very, very important because now given the angular state, signals will be heavily implemented and used. So this is your chance to learn angular 19 signals from scratch with me. I hope you will enjoy. I hope you're learning. So make sure you hit that like button if you're enjoying this tutorial. <coughs> Without wasting time, let's jump right into code. All right, so we left the last tutorial at step 13 where we created a model. Today we'll do step 14. Today we'll be creating a service. Create a service and we will use uh, we'll write implement the methods to consume the endpoints that we created with json server which is localhost 300 3000 let me show you that real quick if you are new here but if you so your state should look like this so far when you type localhost 3000 expenses you should see the json returned in array with all the values also if you are running angular application which I am not currently. So let me go ahead. And type ng serve. That's the command you will run to run the angular application and localhost 4200. You should see this screen and this screen in order to proceed further. If you have reached here, good job. Keep continue. Now close it. Now we are going to generate a service by the name expense. We are going to make use of signals in this particular um, service. So expand the app and you will see the services created. The ideal way should have been it should be inside a services folder. So I'm going to select these two and delete them because I want to show you how it's done. So create a folder called services inside the app. Go inside the CD source app services. And now let's regenerate that again. So now you have the services inside the folder. Okay. I could have just moved it, but I wanted you to see that how to do that. So ng generate service, the name of the service I'm giving is expense. Let's close this here. All right, now let's go to the service. If you see this, it's an injectable, which means it will be directly provided wherever you want. You can inject it in anywhere. This is part. All right, let's start kickstart with signals. Okay. All right. So first I'm going to create a variable and call it private and say expense signal equal to so what is this type it's a it's a type of signal right that we'll be maintaining and what type it is so i'm going to say it's a type of expense and you see it imported the model 
this is the model that we had created in the last episode which is nothing but an interface so I'm saying we are creating a signal of type expense and what will it hold correct it's an array right because it will have multiple data to maintain and what should be the state of it so we are going to say let's start with empty all right so that's how you declare signal okay so signals are very very important part of angular now everybody should know how to use them right I don't want to show you a simple example of where we just update a value and say oh signal value or no this is the practical usage this is how you will use signals going forward in angular applications all right now that we have done it next thing what we'll do let's inject the HTTP because we are going to make calls all right now we are going to say this dot HTTP now yeah, on load right uh, now that we have injected this I'll show you other ways also of how you can inject HTTP we'll come to that in just a bit I want to show you some errors that you will run into so and I'll want to show you why you will get those errors all right so let's go to application refresh nothing no errors so far which is good I'll show you the when the errors will start coming in so I'm going to create a function and let's say fetch expenses usually if you are building something you can say get expenses this will return you list of all the expenses the next thing we'll do we'll use the HTTP to make a get call get is used for retrieving the data before we make the call we have to tell what type it's going to return and then what we are going to do is pass the URL which is nothing but localhost this is the endpoint that we created using our JSON server so localhost 3000 slash expenses now when you hit that you will get this output in here once you have that the next thing we'll do is we'll subscribe to it now in when you subscribe you get data and what we will do we'll pass that data to this dot expense signal dot set we are setting a value of that now so now this is how we'll be using signals going forward in angular so signal we created a private variable signals are always private remember that now once you have that initial value is empty but once we make a request get call we get the data we are assigning and setting that new value for the signal okay now once you have done that the next thing we'll do is we will write a get uh, setter actually okay get and set methods usually you would have heard it in object oriented heavy programs like Java etc but in TypeScript also we can do that okay so we what we are doing we are doing a get and here we'll just return this expense signal okay so whenever you want to use in other places you will can just use this method I told you signal is private you cannot use that so I'm exposing I'm sending that data via method called expenses whenever I want to use I'll just use this function okay all right while we are at it I'll just go ahead quickly so we did this for get all expenses now same way I'm going to add some more for add update and delete so next we'll write for add expense now here again it will be a method again what you'll do you will use this dot HTTP dot post it's a post because you're adding right now you're not just getting the data you're adding the data so post now 
post will accept two parameters. One is the actual data that you want to add. So we will have to pass that here. And what is the type of it? Its type is expense. So we are saying post to this URL, this data that we will pass to this method. And last, again, we'll subscribe. We will get the updated data back. And what we will do with it? We will then either use it or I can just say don't do anything with the output. Instead, call, have a callback function, which is this dot get expenses. So I'm calling this method again once the add is successful. <coughs> that way I get the latest data signal data will also be updated as part of this. All right. So I hope this is clear. And if you have any questions, doubts or as to why you think I've done in certain way, or if you like to um, understand, drop me a comment, probably I'll help you out with it. All right. So next is delete expense. Now in this again, we'll do the same, but this time these are all HTTP. So, you know, so you have the delete option, HTTP dot delete. And what you'll do, you'll do the same drill again, which is you will pass, you'll call the same URL. These are all rest endpoints, which means endpoint will be same, methods will be different. Perfect. So now with this, we'll have to pass the value. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll convert this into a temp string literal, template literal. And here at the end, we will write dollar and we'll pass the ID of the expense that we want to delete. So we'll pass it here. Now this will be a number or a string, but just go with number. Okay. It like usually if it's a multi-character alphanumeric, you can also have it as a string, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just keeping it as a number for now. All right. So we got the URL and again on subscription, once again, all we'll do is get expenses. Once you have deleted, call the expenses. That way our signal is getting updated every time you're making these changes because here you're setting the value of the expense. In this file, we are only setting the value. We created a signal we are setting the value. We will read it via expenses in other components that we will generate. So we got code for get, add expense, delete, update an expense. So we'll write update expense. Now this is the code to update. Now update will take two parameters. One is the ID. ID is the um, value of an expense that we want to update. Now here we'll also pass the actual body. Body is nothing but the data that you want to update. Now what type it is? It's of type expense. All right, perfect. And now all we have to do is this dot HTTP dot put and again we'll pass the same. We'll use this string literal here because put needs an ID. What ID, which expense you are trying to update. It will have slash ID. And then we will pass updated expense. That is nothing but the updated data. And on subscription, we will fire it back and set the new signal. So all set. Uh, okay, so we got the get we got the get all expenses, add, delete, update. We'll need one more, which is get expense by ID. Now what in these cases, this is important because in during update, you will have to read a value of one expense first and then update it, right? So we need to get that expense ID by ID. So let's go ahead again, write a method and say get expense by ID. It's an ID. 
again you can pass a number or a string I'll show you different variations so that it's easy for you now <coughs> all right so either it will be undefined all right um, let's do one thing let's just stick to this for now and let's proceed and we'll keep will return this dot expense signal from the signal what we'll do is we'll try and find this is an array basically expense signal now because here if you see we are saying that expense signal is a array of expense right which means it's an array so here I'm saying from the array find the matching one now for each find an expense and then just compare and say expense dot it will show options of what all it's returning so if you type dot it will give you options and let's check that it's matching with ID so it will find the matching expense from our signal which is already having updated values because we are updating it as part of the get call and it will return the matching one okay that's all I'm doing I'm not making an API call right now I'm dealing it with signal instead of making an API call we already made the call and stored the value in signal all I'm doing is querying from the signal finding that matching value all right um, I think that's all uh, this service would need unless we'll see I don't think there is an error so far so so good because we haven't made any use of this service yet so we'll not see but in the next episode let's generate components and start to work on integrating this service into our code all right so create the service and add the HTTP methods and signals that you want to create okay that is step 14 that's what we did today so make sure you take your time pause it type exactly what I've done and come to this state it's a lot of code pause stop take some break and then regroup all right okay so I'll also take some <laughs> few minutes break and record the next one but yeah that would be part 3 we will start writing our components for CRUD functionality this is how live it can get for you to learn angular 19 and all the new features that angular has to offer if you like my work and tutorials please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arc tutorials happy learning see you in the next part